Welcome to the Big Fat Real Estate Checks Podcast with Marco Kozlowski, where we help investors like you get the knowledge and skills you need to replace your J-O-B with passive cash flow for life. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another exciting podcast of Big Fat Real Estate Checks. I hope you've been enjoying the previous episodes where we've gone into the philosophies of how to buy assets using none of your own money and how to get great discounts on assets to make you massive wealth and cash flow to be able to enjoy your life much more by working once and getting paid multiple times on the same asset. And I'm joined today with uh, Gabrielle Araish and Francesco Galluccio out of Canada. And I am also Canadian, but of course I'm in Orlando today. And we will be discussing the magic of the impasse. Uh, Gabriel set it up last time on the last episode. Uh, what can be done when one seller says, no, this is the absolute lowest I'm willing to go. And they understand that we can buy it for a lot less. If they go down anymore, they will be injured. And we know exactly what their next move is going to be. So there's a series of ingredients that are necessary in order to have the perfect impasse. And that would be those three things. And of course, if you love these episodes, please, please, I am on my knees. Uh, leave us an honorable review. Uh, the more honorable reviews that we have and the more positive things we, we hear from these podcasts and the more they are shared, uh, the better it is for everyone. We really want to empower as many people as possible to be financially independent and not have to work for money, but in fact, harness the power of money that other people have to work very well for you. And the impasse is going to be the topic of today. In fact, I teach hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on this topic. Very, very complex. It sounds very simple, but it opens up so many interesting things. So first, let's uh, describe an impasse. I've already done it a little bit. Uh, I'll have Gabriel start today. Uh, Gabriel, tell us what an impasse is. Why is it so important? And um, let's take it from there first. Okay, so let's start with uh, what is an impasse. Uh, an impasse is, is a point at which uh, your seller uh, will identify an, uh, an, an amount of money where he can't take less than that amount. So if, let's say, you know, they're selling something for 250000 and, you know, you've been going back and forth and they say, hey, you know what, we can't go under 200000 That's That's the least we'll take. If you offer us a dollar less, uh, you know, we're just going to hang up. We're never coming back. And on your end, you are actually below 200000 That's where your number lies. And so that, that point where the seller says, I can't go lower, that's what the impasse is. is you've reached basically a, a point of no return for the seller. And on your end, and this is obviously done purposefully if you follow the, the series so far, where your number is going to be well below what their lowest uh, ultimate you know, dead last number is. So that's what the impasse is. And why is that important to create? Because that's the point where you're going to be able to open up a lot of options for you to be able to still, you know, get into the property, just not the traditional way. And this is where creative strategies come into play. This is where you really find the best way to help your seller uh, get their number uh, that suits them but at the same time, providing you with the best possible entry point in terms of not only the purchase price, but the terms. So just, just to clarify just a little bit. So the seller is absolutely not able to come down below 200000 We want to buy it for less because it doesn't meet whatever criteria there is. For example, it's not 30% off. Or it, maybe it is 30% off, but we want to squeeze just a little bit more and see really what the lowest number possible. Because as you know, we are in business and our objective is to buy assets at the best possible price. And if we get to terms too quickly, if we get a yes too quickly, there's buyer's remorse and seller's remorse. Ah, uh, sh I, I should have offered more. Uh, you know, I should have offered less because they took it too quickly or, oh, I, you know, I gave this number and they, I sold it really quickly and I should, I could have gotten more. So there's, there's both of those things that will happen. So by creating an impasse, which is real, uh, a struggle between getting to a number that is agreed on. In fact, the objective is not to get an agreement. It's to get to an impasse, which is, I know you need 200000 And in order for us to buy this and write you a check and get out of this as quickly as possible, we need to be at 180. And there's a gap between those two numbers, a gap between those two numbers. So once we have that gap established, that impasse, there's a few things that also need to happen. One, uh, we need to know exactly why 
they need 200 in order for us to create a solution. We can't prescribe a solution unless we know the reason why they're wanting to sell for that number. And it's not always because they want that number and that's it. There's always a reason behind the number. They need to buy something else. They're retiring, put, want to put the money away. Uh, they owe taxes that they have to pay. Uh, or there's going to be a tax application that they're going to have. Or they have debt that they need to pay off. Plus, they need a little bit of cash to be able to move on to the next thing. They got to pay off their partner, their ex-wife. There's a zillion different reasons why they need that specific number. But it's not the number that they need. It's the next thing that they need. And knowing what that next thing is, is going to open up a world of opportunity uh, in order for us to uh, get into an asset very creatively. Hopefully that's very clear. Frank, in fact, I think we've mentioned about this with the hotel that you purchased at pretty much 60 cents on the dollar. Um, Actually a lot less than that, considering it's, you know, it's got over a million dollars in equity now that you created just by doing what you've done. You started at a number and this was done in the last couple of episodes. So if you haven't listened to that episode, uh, please do. Uh, we actually talk about Frank getting bitten by a dog and everything. So there's a lot of interesting things that happen on that episode. Uh, anyway, so you know, you went back and forth, and Frank discovered what the problems were, and from there created a solution. So Frank, let's let's talk about that again. Even though we've already discussed it, I think just highlighting that because the impasse happened allowed you to go into a solution to really help the seller. No, absolutely. Actually, I, I, I'm, I'm, I want to just point out a few things that you mentioned, which are key here. Um, you indicated that the seller, uh, you know, eventually when the, when the seller posts something online and they want to sell something, uh, that's their want. And, and, and if you listen to Marco carefully over the last, you know, a few minutes right now, he kept saying, what do they need? So there's a difference between the want and the need. Like, you know, obviously they're going to post it higher, but internally they have an internal motive. They have an internal, uh, reason, uh, on what they want inside. So that need is different than the want. And also, you, uh, Marco, you mentioned uh, prescribe. So once you get to that impasse, which I call, it's the line of the sand. Basically, it's the line of the sand. They can't go below that for whatever internal motive that is. Um, and that's when you start peeling the onion back. And, and you know, if you listen to the previous episode uh, about my hotel acquisition is... I had to peel the onion back. They wanted over 500000 I wasn't going to give to them, but I justified why I wasn't going to give to them. And eventually we found out that, hey, he was just in a bad partnership marriage. And that partnership marriage, uh, the partners wanted 50000 to, to to come out. And this guy was, the other partner was the money partner. And he wanted... He just basically he didn't need the money. He just he was the money. He was the bank. So he just wanted his interest that they weren't paying him. Uh, he wanted to lend out his money in exchange for some money. Uh, he wanted his money working for himself, which is fine. So so peeling that onion back. So once you hit that line of the sand, that's when you like Marco said, you got to uh, prescribe. So you got to put on a different hat now. You got to be like the doctor. Okay, where's it hurt? How long does it hurt? Does it hurt when you lift your arm? Does it hurt when you, you know, when you when you wave your hands or whatever? So that's what I was doing with the seller. And it's an it, it's a it's an art, it's a strategy, and it doesn't take one day or a week. It takes time. Like Marco says, it, it you know, you can't rush baking a cake. So it takes time. You got to make it marinate and ask the right questions at the right time to get to that conclusion. Which is very different than what most people do when they want to do something is they, they, they almost force, this is the solution that I have for you. This is what I'm going to pay you. Uh, take it or leave it. Uh, if they want owner financing terms, for example, they'll go, well, will you hold a note as their first question? You know, will you just hold paper on this? Or, uh, you know, would you, would you hold a second mortgage at, at, you know, 25% on the, almost on the first, you know, point of conversation? Anyone that's asking for financing or owner financing, when they first start, you're giving off the impression that you don't have any money. The people that ask for money generally are the ones that don't have any. So by asking these creative questions, which are important, but not at the right time, it's like meeting someone and then pulling them in and giving them a kiss right away. It's not the right time. Build a relationship first, see if they're interested, and then go in, in, you know, in that direction. And you know, see if they're into you, obviously, because then it's weird. But um, you know, it's it's important to have timing in that. And uh, if you don't, you're you're really hurting yourself and the seller. Yes, Gabriel. Well, that's that's actually one thing that's wrong with coming up and providing solutions or enforcing your solution. But the other issue is 
if you're going in there and asking them to, you know, hold the hold the, a second mortgage, for example, do some seller financing, what if they have no equity in it? Like you don't know that yet. Maybe they're, you know, leveraged up all the way to the gills, or maybe they have they owe other people money. So you're you're actually it's like, you know, uh, you're going to the doctor and then you're gonna tell the doctor what to prescribe, but that you can't do that. So you gotta actually the first step is to figure out at that impasse, once you've hit it, is to figure out, well, why is it that that bottom line number is the bottom line number so that you can not only diagnose the, the problem, but then find the right prescription to be able to give to them. So the, so why is the impasse so important is if you've done it right, you have convinced the seller, and I don't like that word convinced, but you've shown to the seller, you have demonstrated to the seller, you have influenced the seller that into an understanding that you have the ability to close just not at the number that they need. So there's still trust that you are financially capable. It's their needs don't allow your cash. And there's an impasse. So there's a trust there that has to be built. And through that, if they have, listen, it, you know, I need, I, I need to sell for 200,000. I owe 180 and I need 20,000 for this operation. If I don't get it, I'm, I'm going to be dead then it's very it's a simple conversation to say well why don't i give you 20 grand i'll i'll take over your mortgage and i'll save your life and that point it's not the 200,000 that matters it's the 20 grand and them getting the operation and just like in frank's hotel they need to get rid of that partnership and that was more important than the actual number so if you really listen to what the problem is so you are able to find a solution as opposed to trying to find a solution before you know what the problem is, which is very common in people that are trying to get into creative real estate. Yeah, no, and, and on the hotel deal, just to, to, to circle back with that, uh, one of the partners didn't really care. He didn't, and not that he would care, he didn't need any money. He just, he had his capital that he invested into that partnership. He just wanted the interest that they didn't pay him over the years. And that's where I think that fifteen thousand come uh, came from when, when 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 I put everything together, and it was a few years back. But he just wanted, you know what? They haven't paid me. I used my money to buy this property years ago. They didn't pay me, so he was happy just to keep his 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 original principal there and let me pay him his arrears. And for the other two, they just wanted fifty thousand, twenty five thousand a piece that they could just walk away because they knew the property wasn't. You know, anything. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't anything pretty to look at. Uh, that's for sure. So as soon as you find out their needs are prescribed, I really like that, that word where you're listening to what their problem is and you're basically solving their problem. It's the fundamentals of any business, whether you're in real estate or in online marketing, it's, it, you're, you're solving problems. And obviously the bigger the problem, the bigger the payday for you. Uh, and that's ultimately what it is. The impasse is, is solving that problem. But before you solve it, you got to ask certain questions. You got to peel that onion back. You got to go into the discovery mode uh, and figure out what they truly need, not what they want. Absolutely. In fact, if you look at our deal with the mobile home park that we bought also in Florida, um, there was a, a guy that wasn't getting paid with a partnership and he ended up staying on as a mortgage holder uh, in that, in that deal as well. And, so it's so much easier to figure out what people want, go get it, and then just go give it to them. That's all business is in any business. Figure out what people want, go get it, and go give it to them. And it's not always the number that they need. It's what are they going to do next? What are they using, what are they using the cash for? How fast do they need it? Do they need all the money now, or can they take some now, some later? What's their tax consequence? Because if they pay, if they if they get as much as they actually are selling it for and they've had the property a while, it's going to murder them on taxes. They're going to get you know, recapture that depreciation if they're not 1031-ing it, which is just a fancy word for they're not buying something else of like kind. The IRS allows you to defer your taxes. But if they're not doing that, they're just cashing out their chips, they're going to have a ton of depreciation to catch up to and they might not even make anything, which is really terrible. So... Wouldn't it be neat to be able to have a conversation with a seller and a really honest, I want to help you conversation based on, I can't give you what you absolutely need at this number to write a check for, but let's find a different way to get you what you need so it works for everyone. Wouldn't that be neat? In fact, that's how deals are created. I've said this before, deals aren't found, they're created. And the only way they can be created is through an impasse. 
Anything more to add to this, gentlemen? I think we, we I just want to do the general idea of it. And as we go through uh, this podcast series, uh, we can really figure out different solutions that can be created with hundreds of different solutions that, that are available that are extremely creative where, in fact, you can buy assets for a dollar um, because they need to sell it to you for a dollar when they realize what actually is going to be the consequence of them getting what they're looking for. Or you can even buy it for two times its value. But the way we've structured the deal, it actually costs you nothing um, because it's, it's on paper versus actual physical money. So there's really neat things that you can do um, to really help other people. And the number doesn't matter. It's how we get there that, that really counts. Gentlemen, Gabriel, anything to add to that? No, I think uh, we've nailed it pretty good. And, but that's why they call it the art of the impasse because it, it definitely is. It is an art. Frank? No, the only thing I was going to say is, yeah, you have different scenarios once you find out what they really actually need. And, and there's some scenarios, Marco, I know you've, you, you communicated in the past where people actually paid you to take over their property because they're basically giving you their bricks of problems. They're like, you know what, you take it because it's more of a loss for me if I keep hanging on to this. So it depends what you, uh, and you got to have the edu- education. Once you hit the impasse and you learn and you have in your tool chest, you know, different tools for, for, for that particular uh, solution, uh, then you're armed with um, uh, solutions for that seller where they're more compelling to say, you know what, I kind of like where you're coming from. Meanwhile, you got to understand, some people are going to run away from a lot of properties where they just see the numbers. They see the numbers <clears throat> and they're like, no, it's only worth X amount, but I can't, there's no way I can give you that. They walk away. You're the only one that's there pulling out your tools out of your tool chest or out of your backpack. Uh, and that's what I really love about this. It's, it's you're, you're really... Uh, it is an art and you're really just putting, you know, your Phillips screwdriver and your hammer and your uh, whatever tools necessary for that particular deal uh, in place. And once you've mastered it, it's, yeah, yeah, just, it's limitless, the opportunities. You can basically make a deal out of anything. So if anything, ha- if anyone has anything for sale and they don't need all the money right away, there's a way to make it work. And if you think about it, how many people will have or will have something to to sell where they don't necessarily need all the money, but they need something to move on to the next thing. And however they get there, that next thing is more important than getting all the money right away. And it's, there's, there's a ton of people. And how many people will get to a point where, for example, as the economy churns, we've said this before, how many mortgages will be on an asset where they basically owe what it's worth or a little bit more than it's worth or a little bit less than it's worth and they just want to get out from underneath it? Again, all created through the impasse. Hopefully this was clear. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. Uh, This was just a quick brushstroke overview of why the impasse is so important. Our objective in negotiation is not to get to a yes. It's actually get to a no and a good no. And a no where there's a relationship built where, again, we know why they can't go down. We know if they get any lower, they're going to hurt themselves. And they are sure I don't like the word convinced. I'm, I'm really hesitating on this convinced word. And they are absolutely sure that you have the money to close, just not at their number. So gentlemen, thank you so much. Again, if you love this episode, please share it, leave a great comment. And I'm really excited to see your results by applying these phenomenal tools. If you like this episode of Big Fat Real Estate Checks, then show some love by leaving a comment and a good rating. Also, as a thank you for tuning in today, we've got a special free gift. The journey to passive cash flow for a life starts by finding deals, and it's easier than you think. Simply go to getdealsbytuesday.com, enter your email address, and we'll send you a free quick start course called Deals by Tuesday. Even if it's 11 p.m. Monday night, this course will show you how to find discounted real estate deals by Tuesday. It's that fast and simple. Go to GetDealsByTuesday.com and start your journey toward life-changing cash flow today. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Mm